I was in the kitchen listening to mum go on and on about the dead boy on the common. When dad comes in and says, I've got a surprise in the car, mum rolls her eyes and says, what? Nah. Dad has a habit of surprising you with something you never wanted to be surprised by. A few months ago, it was a rowing machine. He said, it keep you fit and healthy. I said, I am fit and healthy. He said, more fit and healthy. I said, I don't want to be more fit and healthy. He said, just give it a try. I did. Used it once. Boring. If I wanted to go rowing, which I don't, I'd go down the river somewhere where there's lots of things to look at. Not in a cellar staring at a brick wall and a mouse in a trap. Mum follows Dad out to the car. I watch from the doorway. Mum's in eye rolling overdrive. Dad opens the boot like he's revealing the Ark of the Bloody Covenant. But all I can see is... There's something wrapped in dirty plastic. Mum says, what's that? A vacuum cleaner? It certainly could be a vacuum cleaner and mum has been asking for a new one. Dad says, no, it's not a vacuum cleaner. He looks at me and says, you want to have a guess? I say, no. He says, come out and have a closer look. I say, I don't want to. He says, oh, go on. I say, I don't want to. He says, it's a bit of fun. I said, no, it's not. Mum says, well, it could be body parts. I said, mum. She says, what? I said, why are you always talking about murder and stuff? She says, I'm not always talking about murder and stuff. I said, you are? She said, when? I said, just now. The kid they found on the common, Dad said, yeah. They say he was stabbed 30 times. I say, if you both carry on like this, I'm going to my room. Mum says, well, just show us what's in your bloody boot. Dad pulls back a bit of dirty plastic with a, ta-da. I'm not the bloody wiser, nor is mum. Dad says, it's a telescope. I say, what do we want one of those for? Dad says, so we can see the night sky. Mum says, what do we want to do that for? Dad says, so we can see Mars. Mum says, what do we want to do that for? Dad says, it's the closest it's been to Earth in 500 years, unless you plan to live to a thousand. Which, as far as jokes go, it's pretty good for Dad. Next thing I know, he's in the living room trying to unpack this bloody thing. Mum says, it's going to be far too big for an ear. Dad says, no, it's not. Mum says, yes, it is. Look at all these parts. Dad says, we'll just move the sofa back a little. Mum says, I don't want to move the sofa back a little. Take it out into the garden. I say, I'm not going out into the garden. Dad says, no one can see you. I said, yes, they can. He says, not with a new fence. I say, it's going to rain anyway. Mum says, no, it's not. Dad says, there's not a cloud in the sky. I say, I'm not going out into the fucking garden. Next thing I know, Dad's in the back garden trying to assemble this, this humongous sized bloody telescope without any instruction manual whatsoever. Because Dad, of course, got it from a friend, which is Dad speak for stolen. And I'm bloody hopeless at anything DIY, so I can't help. And even if I could help, I wouldn't. And Dad, they will never bloody admit it, bloody hopeless too. Stand at the kitchen doorway watching. Mum picks up a few telescope parts, puts them back down again. She says, I'll make us a jacket potato, shall I? Dad says, yeah, amazing. Like she's offering to take him on a world cruise or something. She looks at me and says, do you want one? I say, no. But an hour later, I've got a jacket potato grated cheese in my hand. It tastes as boring as it sounds. Three hours. Three hours it took Dad to assemble this fucking telescope. He only gives up when it starts to rain. I say, told ya. He says, help me get inside. I said, no. Mum, who's been eye-rolling like she's trying to break the world record, says to Dad, oh, come on, I'll help you, but we're putting it straight in the cellar. They both get soaked. Afterwards, Mum says, I think I'm catching a chill. The next morning, whatever mum had caught, had gone straight to her chest, like it always does. And by that evening, she was cough, coughing up gunk thick enough to stick bricks together. Halfway during the night, dad comes to my room and says, your mum's not sounding too great. I'll go to their bedroom. Mum's breathing sounds like dog growling in a submarine. I say, we should run an emergency doctor. Dad says, ah, oh, I can't be that bad. I said, it could be pneumonia. Dad says, ah, oh, it can't be. I said, it could be. He says, it can't be. I said, pneumonia is a killer. The emergency doctor turns up about three hours later. He says it's not pneumonia, it's bronchitis. Dad looks at me and says, told ya. Emergency doctor prescribes a course of antibiotics. But mum, like always, has a bad reaction to them because whatever mum takes to make her better makes her worse. Mum vomits and shits for non-stop for almost two weeks. She spends so much time in the bathroom, dad makes her a makeshift shelf. Very makeshift. 
for in magazines and makeup. All mum keeps saying is, I must be losing so much weight. I keep telling her, doesn't look like it. She keeps saying, but I must be. I keep telling her, I don't think so. But when she finally takes off dad's dressing gown, her dressing gown, the unknown numbers of jumpers and tracksuit bombs that she's been wearing underneath, I can see she has lost weight, about 15 pounds, or so she says. Mum gets her hair done, her nails done, a full day long body treatment at more than skin deep that leaves her looking like she's been parboiled and scrubbed with sandpaper. She even buys herself a whole new wardrobe, including a bikini, something she's never even contemplating wearing before. She says, I, I told your dad I want a proper holiday this year, somewhere up with sandy beaches. You should come with us. I say, I don't want to come with you. She says, you'll enjoy it. I say, no, I won't. She says, yes, you will. I said, no, I won't. She says, yes, you will. I said, no, I won't. I said, she says, you need to get out of the house more. I say, look, don't go thinking you'll be showing off your new body. By the time summer comes, all that weight you've lost, you'll put it all back on again. She says, no, it won't. I said, yes, it will. She says, no, it won't. I said, yes, it will. She says, no, it won't. I said, yes, it will. She says, no, it won't. I decide not to engage with this conversation any further or what passes for our conversation in this fucking, fucking, fucking family. Phone my best mate, Kaylee. She says, remember that kid they found on the common? I say, why does everyone keep going on about it? She says, shut up, listen. Animals have been gnawing at his face while he lay dead. His own parents didn't recognise him. I say, don't talk about him like that. He's, he's, not, he's not just a fucking anecdote. We, we should be, we should be. Kaylee says, I'm not going to carry on talking to you if you're in one of your moods. Lighten up. I look out the window. The fence looks flimsy. It's wobbling in the breeze. It could fall down. Wild dogs could get him. People with knives. Martians. I say, Kaylee, do you know anyone that wants to buy a telescope? 